Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Good morning. That's my little song. You know what? I cannot, I don't think I can sing, but it doesn't stop me from singing. I mean, just so long as like I'm enjoying it and I'm not offending anybody, I sing. I mean, what's it going to do? You know, you can't stop the song in your heart just because you can't carry a tune. That's what I say. So if you want to sing, just sing. So today I'm going to start off with, um, with some positivity. Because like I was saying, the world is just sometimes full of negativity. We have a tendency to gravitate towards negativity for some reason. Um, it's easier to be mean to ourselves than it is to be nice to ourselves. So I thought we would start off with something nice today. And Dove sent me some shampoo and these little self-love shower affirmations. So we're gonna pick one out today. We're gonna start our um, we're gonna start our show with a positive um, self love affirmation. Now, if you have not had a chance, and um, I really really liked this week's podcast, um, you can either listen to it on iTunes or Spotify, or you can actually watch Robert and I recording it. I uploaded it yesterday um, to YouTube. So you can actually watch us recording it. And what the subject of this week was, I shared my experience on how I got my journey of self-love. Basically going from, um, I like your lipstick. Morgan, thank you. Linda just said that she loved my lip color also. This is a MAC liquid lip color. And it's called um, Been There, Plum That. And this is my favorite. Um, this is my favorite color. I know I've tried the red and I know I've tried the blue, but this is my favorite by far. And also, too, I'll get to, I am starting so many different subjects. But um, yesterday on the cooking show, oh, stop it. Okay, I am like in five different directions. Can you tell? Hello, Lauren. Can you tell that that's how my brain operates? My brain is just here. I mean, it bounces around all day long. So getting back to the podcast, I shared my journey of how I started my self-love journey. And I, it really kind of resonated to, um, in me because Robert, the week prior, had talked about um, low self-esteem. And your self-love journey, you basically have to figure out where your low self-esteem is in order to start your self-love journey. So I, um, I shared five, five tips on how to start your journey, um, three examples from Robert's podcast the week before, and then some examples. And I thought it was a really good, I thought it was a really good episode. So um, it talked about self-love. So I think starting off with a self-love affirmation is what we need to do. And oops, going in. Um, love the top. Thank you, Linda. This one is free people. This is the Danny tank and they're like 20 bucks. These are probably one of the most affordable free people tops I have that I really, really love. And it, um, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it on Free People, but they're like 20 bucks. And I like them because I think it's the perfect length. See? Perfect length top. All right, so Lonnie, get to your self-love affirmation. Okay, here we go. Okay. Ooh. All right, so it says, my thoughts become my reality. Everything is possible for me going to repeat that because it is extremely important. My thoughts become my reality. Everything, sorry about that TikTok, I got a phone call. My thoughts become my reality. Everything is possible for me. Because what we end up doing is, is like, if we have a goal or if we have something we wanna do, we have more reasons why we can't do it than why we can do it, all right? We're constantly telling ourselves, how scary it is to try something new, or you know, you can't be a social media influencer over 50, nobody's gonna wanna hear what you have to say. And that's, 
that is a an inner thought that I deal with on a daily basis. I mean, it is it is like my um, trigger. So my thoughts have to become my reality. My thoughts have to be positive. My thoughts have to be like, hey, you know what, Lonnie? You know, people do it. If they can do it, you can do it. And that is 100% um, my goal is to make sure that I, um, I share that. Okay, I'm wearing my glasses today because my allergies are killing me. And it always drives me crazy when I can see the ring light in people's glasses. So I think I moved it, and that's why I'm all like, I'm looking at my glasses. So have that positive self-thought. You know what? It's Again, it is just as easy to have a positive thought as it is to have a negative thought. But we gradual, we grad, we graduate, we grad, we gravitate, that's the word that's not coming out, we gravitate towards negative thoughts because it's an easier place because people have a tendency to do that. So stop doing it. Be positive. Have positive th self-thoughts. Tell yourself everything you can do, not everything you can't do. So YouTube, I just want to make sure, are my glasses okay? You don't really, is there, it, I just want to make sure there's not a big reflection that's bothering you. So if it is, let me know. And if it's not, let me know. So YouTube on three, two, one, go. All right, we'll wait and see what they have to say. All right, so we're starting today. Oh, yesterday. Yesterday, my eyes were just bothering me so much. I wear contacts. I really cannot see without my glasses or my contacts. So my makeup was a complete, like, guess. So yesterday, I found myself, and I'm sitting there, and, and I'm trying to cook and read the comments, and I'm like, I can't see what they're saying. So I um, went to CVS, and I bought myself some allergy drops. Um, seems fine to me. Lauren, that works for me. So I got myself some allergy drops for my eyes and instantly my eyes feel better. And I just decided just to give myself a day off from wearing contacts. So you get me with glasses. And that pasta I made yesterday was so good. All right. I ended up having that for my lunch dinner and um, I had that pasta. It's the street corn pasta salad. And I got one of my plant-based chicken patties and I put an avocado over it with some sriracha. <gasps> it was so good. And guess what I'm having for dinner again today? My lunch dinner. I'm having that. So I don't know if you know this or not, but people are always asking me, they're always like, how do you stay so in your shape? And I'm like, oh, I don't really think I'm in that great a shape because I'm very critical on myself. Again, negative talk is much easier than positive talk. But I don't eat, uh, I eat like my big meal of the day about three o'clock. And it's kind of like a real senior citizen thing to do, but it is absolutely helps me so much because if I eat a big meal like at five o'clock I'm just like ugh, I don't sleep well I feel stuffed all night and um, it just doesn't work for me so I'll eat one big meal about hmm, about 2 30 or 3 and then I have like a really healthy snack um, before when I get hungry in the evening and what I have is, is I'll get some um, yogurt some like Greek yogurt. I really like the honey one. And then I'll slice up an apple with some, some granola. And that's my dinner. And that really seems to work well for my maintaining my weight as much as I can. And also too, it doesn't make me too stuffed before I go to dinner. So that pasta yesterday was amazing. So if you haven't made it yet, get the ingredients and absolutely um, try that. My lip color. This is MAC Liquid Lip Color. And the um, shade that I'm using is Been There Plum Matte. Absolutely love it. And what I used to do, because I was always like, um, I don't know, sometimes I have a tendency to have like, ideas of being brighter and bolder and I end up doing it and then I tone it down 
And so I got this amazing lip color, but what I was doing is, is I was putting it on and then I was wiping it off and there's a much muted, much more muted color underneath this initial application. And I was like, oh, that looks good. And I'm like, no, stop doing that. Again, Lonnie, stop doing that. I put on this, um, the lip color and I leave it on this really bright, not this bold color and I love it. And if you're out there and you're over 50 and you're wondering whether or not you can wear like a red or a dark lip, I 100% recommend it because now that I've gone this a little bit darker shade of lipstick, I have noticed that it actually makes my teeth look whiter. And if I go for like a nude kind of like, almost like a taupe color lipstick, um, it makes my teeth look dingy. So I'm all about bright, bold lips and um, white teeth. So I'm just like, there you go. <laughs> this, is, this is that, this is what it is. Okay, so we are talking about tattoos today. We are gonna get to that subject, but I just wanna um, touch on a couple of things that I, um, that I saw today on the news and I'm so shocked. But did you know that Pat Sajak on the Wheel of Fortune yeah, that's the show. He's retiring. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. But what I didn't realize is that he started that 41 years ago. And I remember when the Wheel of Fortune started on TV. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know what? When, you're, when the game shows are like 41 years old and you can remember when they start, you're like, oh, yeah, no, how old does that make me? So I'm like, oh, yeah, how old does that make me? But I was just wondering, I mean, I didn't even know that game shows were still on. And then also, too, I didn't know that people watched real TV. I mean, I haven't had an actual cable in my house for years. So my question is, is do you all still have cable or is it just me? Because I just do Hulu and um, Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime. And other than that, I don't watch TV. So I was just wondering, is it me or is it a... Um, is it a me thing or is it an us thing? That's what I'm wondering. And then also too, this has to do with TikTok, is one of my favorite TikToks to watch is the street fashion ones, you know, where people, um, we still have cable, um, husband refuses to get rid of it. Yeah, no, I can get that. I mean, especially if he wants to watch sports. Oh my God, I still watch Wheel of Fortune with my mom. I'm 31 and she's 64. Yeah, no, it's a good show. And when I was a kid, there was much more, um, there was much more game shows and stuff like that. And there was cool things like um, Hollywood Squares and the, um, the one where you dressed up, let's make a deal. Just really cool stuff like that. Um, and she watched it while in labor with me. Oh, that's awesome. You know what? I watched The Price is Right when I was in labor with Brandon. And um, that was a good show. Lauren says, not just you. I don't watch TV um, either. Yeah, no, that was me. So getting back to these street fashion TikToks, all right? One of my th favorite things to watch. I mean, they just pick the most amazing styles. And then also, too, they are like always walking by and they've got like such a great swagger and there's always cool music. And then it's just... Um, it's always just like, wow, look how cool they are. Well, what happened in China is that um, it's a very popular thing to do in some of the shopping malls. And they don't have TikTok, but they have their version of like a social media channel. And they somebody took pictures of this um, older gentleman. He was 50 and this really pretty younger lady in her 20s. Good morning, Tiggy. And they took a picture of them because she had amazing style and they put it on their social media channel. Well, comes to find out he is a very well-known um, CEO of some construction company in China and that was not his wife. And um, they posted it and he got fired, she got fired. I don't know if he's getting divorced, but it all comes back down to me thinking about it. And while I love watching street fashion like that. There's a, these are people's lives. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that um, 
the story that we put behind the outfit is a true story. I mean, I've seen TikToks where people were um, like showing people at a bus station or a train station and they're like, oh, look at this guy. His, um, his date is late to show up and he's upset. And the guy was actually like, what are you talking about? I'm married and I was commuting to work and you're telling the world that I'm cheating on my wife. So, um, and I'm just like, it brings me down to this like whole personal, like where I go with my platform. And even when I'm out and about and I'm filming, I don't film other people because you know what? Maybe they don't want to be on social media. Maybe, um, yeah. So, um, Elaine, sorry. Oh, I got to move that. Elaine says, yeah, that has always felt icky to me. Leave strangers alone. Absolutely. And so when I'm out filming, I'll be going along and then somebody will walk by me and I'll put my camera down or I will be, um, Amy says, somebody say, Hey, we want some, I don't know what you want. Um, so I put my camera down and especially if there's children and so to me, sometimes that's the cringy, icky side of social media is when people are like making up narratives just to get views. And you just have to remember, y'all, when you're out there and you're filming somebody else, um, that's somebody else's life. And th the views are going to come and go, but whatever damage you do to these people is long lasting. So I'm just going to say, just have, you know, a little bit better moral code when you're out filming in public and just make sure that, you know, you might just, thank you, Courtney. And you just might want to just be like, Hey, you know, I can get views some other way. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, um, I also did when I saw that news story, I saw another one about an underground boat tour in New York capsized. And I, for one thing, thank you, Anne. Um, I, for one thing, am like, I did not know that there were underground tunnels in New York. Um, apparently it's like, uh, I don't know, you go down into this cave and you take a boat tour in these little like, um, waterways underneath some city in New York. And I'm like, oh my God, even talking about it and even discussing this, I like almost started having a hot flash because I do not like confined spaces. I am not the best swimmer. And what happened is, is that their boat, um, their boat capsized and a 60 year old guy drowned and other people got hurt and the canal, that's what it is. It was a canal was like almost as wide as the boat. So I'm like, what happened to make this boat capsized? And then it was, the water was like, if you were tall, you could have walked out. So I'm like, I don't know. Uh, like I said, for me personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable going into a canal underground in a boat full of strangers in the dark, but that's just me. Now, here's the question is, um, there are so many underground in New York, there's no room left on ground. Yeah, but I mean, is that something like if you were on vacation in New York and you're going around and you saw like this sign for underground canal exploring, would you be like, yeah, that really sounds like a good idea because I am sweating, even talking about it. I am like breaking out in a cold sweat thinking about doing that. Now I can go to a city and, and go in the subway all day long. For some reason that doesn't bother me. I think it's because it's so much more open, but I think it's the confined space in water in the dark. I don't know. Like I said, to me, it was just me. I, I feel so bad for the, the gentleman who passed away, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't do it. And I, and I, I couldn't do a hot air balloon either. So there's a whole lot of things I can't do. And I need to start talking about the things I can do because that is, again, the subject of my entire platform. So how often do you get touch-ups on your tattoos off topic? Sorry. Nope, not a problem because this is all about Tattoo Tuesday and we are starting on that. I just want to... Um, I got some changes coming with my morning show. It's all positive. It's all going to be great. 
Um, I am constantly working on improving my product and I have a schedule with a scheduled meeting with Robert, my son this afternoon, because I have some ideas. Cause like I said, I always want to improve your experience of joining me on my live shows. So tattoo Tuesday, we are getting into that. Um, as far as, um, touch-ups on my tattoo, the only ones that I've had to do is this one right here on my shoulder. This is one of my older tattoos. I got this in 2007. Um, I didn't wear sunscreen when I was drinking because I didn't take care of myself and it gets a lot of sun. So I've had this one updated mm, maybe twice, once for sure, maybe twice. And it's definitely, um, definitely something that you can do. Tina says, hey, Lonnie, at work. Unfortunately, I can't watch now. Wanted to say hi. I'll be watching tonight. Love Love Tattoo Tuesday. Thank you, Tina. And thank you for jumping in. So, and here's the thing on, on tattoos and like, you know, they're all like, oh, they're going to look terrible when you're older. You know what? No, they're not. But it is, if you get a tattoo in your twenties and then you're in your forties and it's not as bright as you, it used to be, just get it touched up. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why we have the philosophy of like, well, there's your tattoo. You can never touch it again. Whatever you have, that's just what you're stuck with. And that's not necessarily the case at all. So if you get a tattoo and it's not as vibrant as you liked it, have it touched up. You know, I personally, if you're going to have a tattoo touched up, I would take it as the philosophy of almost like a cover up. All right. Even though you're not actually covering it up and changing it, you're adding ink to an existing tattoo and you're adding layer on layer on layer and you want to make sure that it's done properly. So I would perhaps reach out to an artist that is well versed in cover up tattoos and have them brighten up your, your tattoo at as many times as you want. There's no, there's no expiration. There's no like, well, I'm sorry, you've already done that three times. You are unfortunately now you can never have another touch up if that's not the way it is. So just get as many touch ups as you want. No shame in getting touch ups. Absolutely. And you know what? That should be on a t-shirt. We should make a t-shirt that says no shame in tattoo touch ups. But today's subject, the main subject of today is when good tattoos go bad. All right. Now we all go into each tattoo appointment with the absolute 100, 100% um, intention to get a good lasting tattoo. One that is going to look just as good today as it does tomorrow, as it does in a year, as it does in 10 years. Sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. Now, um, oh, okay, I'm, I'm a tattoo addict and I have a personal tattoo artist who um, is very close with me. Oh, awesome. And she told me um, every few years or so we could. Oh, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> Real estate, oh my gosh. Okay, I want everybody to stop. Pin drop. Boink. We have Mr. Zachary Bach on YouTube joining us. Hello. How are you, sir? Now, here's the thing. It's like a lot of times um, that we hear about like professions and tattoos. I mean, Zach is a professional and he has tattoos. He has a lot of them and he hasn't stopped him from being a success. So hello, Zachary. I was thinking about you the other day. I almost texted you and I probably should have. Um, hi from TikTok. Hello, Naomi. Okay, so when good tattoos go bad, again, everybody wants, um, aw, wow, thank you, Zach. Zach just gave me $5. <laughs> All right, so when good tattoos go bad, now, there's certain things we can do and there's certain things we can't do, all right? And some of the things that we can do to make sure that we are getting a good tattoo that's going to last. I keep on saying that. But one of the things that we have to do is we have to be very conscientious about the placement of where we are putting it. All right. Now there are certain places on our body that is the tattoo is going to um, last longer than others. And by that, I mean, um, <laughs> Zach's all over the place. Now he's on TikTok. All right. So what, um, 
your placement is extremely important. And I know that from personal experience because each time that I've gotten my hand tattoo, I have always talked to Brian um, and I'm like, Ooh, I want my fingers tattooed. And he's like, okay, but we have to make sure that we stay on the top of your fingers. He's like, if you put anything down the side of your fingers, he goes, I don't care how many times I tattoo you, they are not going to last. I'm so happy my artist is also a woman, makes me so much more comfortable. Yes, and we're gonna get to that. So your placement is extremely important. There are places on your body, um, give Lonnie Hearts, let's push her rankings up. Yeah, Zach, you tell him. So it's really gonna depend on your placement. Now, I have had absolutely no problems with the long lasting, um, tattoos on my arms, on my stomachs, on my legs, because I've been able to have tattoo artists who are very um, knowledgeable and they tell me 100% that's not going to last. All right. So your placement is extremely important. Now, if you're like, Lonnie, I don't care. I want a tattoo down the side of my hand. I always wanted it. And that's where I'm getting it. You know what? Go ahead and get it, but just know it's going to require touch-ups. Taking notes for when I'm not broke. Yeah, you know what? I've had to stop my tattooing for this year, and I'm bummed. But it is something that you're going to have to go into. Now, if you do want something down the side of your hand, make sure it's a design that's easily touchable. touch up -a if that's a word. And... Because if you have like a real fine line lettering and it's already going to fade, hmm, might not be your best choice of that tattoo in that area. So again, talk to your artist and make sure where you are putting it is someplace that is going to hold the ink and it's going to last. All right. So now the application. If you have a design of a tattoo, let's just say you found this tattoo and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest tattoo ever. And then you go into your artist and you're like, I want to put this right here on my arm. You already know that this is a spot that's going to take the ink and it's going to stay. And you're like, great. So far, so good. I have two out of the... Um, out of the, the ideas that Lonnie just gave me, I have a great tattoo. I have the right placement. But if your artist does not apply that tattoo properly, no amount of aftercare, no amount of lotion, no amount of sunscreen is going to make that tattoo last. All right. Um, when I got my tattoo on my forearm, um, he want, he went over the line work three times to make sure it's stuck. Yeah, there's, and I'm going to talk about line work too, Zach. So if your artist does not apply it properly, it's not going to last. I've had people be like, yeah, you know, um, I got a new tattoo and it's healed. And when the skin flaked off, all of a sudden now my tattoo is like super faded. And what happened is, is that there wasn't enough ink applied or it wasn't applied deep enough. Now, if you go, if you go too deep, then you're going to get scarring. So you have to have that one tattoo artist that knows how to, that's good. You know, that has a good book and a good, um, okay. That has a good book of, um, of work and you've seen it. I've got a couple of questions I want to get to, then we're going to keep going. Can tattoos hide crepey skin? You know what? Tattoos can hide a whole lot of things. I'll tell you that right now. I have both of my hands tattooed and I absolutely love the fact that my hands are tattooed. Not only because I love the way they look, but because they hide my old hands. I mean, that's just the way it is. I got this one done first and I have a couple of like little age spots on my hands that you can't see anymore. You know, I have this one done um, last year, about about 18 months ago and my hands were getting older looking. I mean, I have some veins that are kind of there and some sun spots. And I mean, I'm almost 60. My hands are supposed to look like they've been around for almost 60 years. And so I'm like, gosh, my hands are looking a little like a little questionable. 
And I asked Brian, I'm like, is it going to be okay? Is it, you know, is my skin too thin? Is it too damaged? And he's like, no, he goes, we got it. It's not that problem. It's not a problem. And thank you, Zachary, for my donuts. So yes, it will hide it. Now I've done some research on like tattooing on crepey skin and it's a lot like tattooing. If you've had like a major weight loss and you have your skin um, doesn't have that, isn't as pliable as it was um, when before your weight or when you were younger, it's doable. It just takes a little bit more of an expertise. So again, um, I would 100% go in and look for that artist who has that knowledge on how to do um, skin that isn't perfect. And we had this discussion last week about how some artists are like on Ink Master only wanted to tattoo perfect skin. Well, nobody is perfect and skin comes in all shapes and sizes. So take your time and find an artist who has experience doing crepey skin or maybe skin that has been um, lost as elect, elect, I can't think of it, elasticity, <laughs> you see, I told you, I, there are some words I can't pronounce, and then, you know what, have that person tattoo, um, let's see, Lonnie, I want fine lines, do those blur or smudge faster, <sighs> that is such a hot topic, you know, fine line tattoos are beautiful, and some things you read, fine line tattoos, they're like, um, it won't last. And some people say fine lines will last. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, this one right here. Can you see my little sun right here? It is all sorts of fine lines. I mean, there's just little details right in the sun's face along the side. I've had this on my forearm now for probably eight years and I don't see any smudging or anything like that. I really, really, really think it's going to depend on the artist, the application. And you have to understand on a fine line, if they don't put a whole lot of ink, that again is going to fade faster than the tattoos that have more ink. And it's not that it's a bad application. It's just that there's less, there's, there's less ink for it to stay. Does that make any sense? So if you want a fine line tattoo, I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to get it, but it's, yeah, just stick around. I got more on that subject. But that is a, um, it's a touchy and iffy subject. So for getting a good tattoo to last, it's the placement, application, and the artist. You have to have those three factors in order to have a good tattoo that is going to last, point blank. I mean, if you have a good tattoo from a good artist in the wrong placement, it's not gonna last. It's just your skin and the way your body holds the ink. If you have a good tattoo and the right placement and an artist who doesn't apply it right, it's not going to last. So it's not a one size fits all. It's not just like, hey, you know what? I, um, I have a great tattoo design and a great artist and this is gonna be forever because again, if you put it in the wrong place, I always, always, always say communicate with your artist and talk to them and plan about longevity because a lot of times we're like, we're like spur of the moment kind of people. It's like, I want a good tattoo and I want it now and I want it in this place. I'm not going to think about 10 years from now. And realistically, it is 100%. You need to think about 10 years from now because you you're going to want your tattoos to look as good as possible 10 years from now. And I say that out of experience. I mean, I'm going to love my tattoos regardless as to what they look like, but do I want to keep them looking as good as possible for as long as possible? 110% yes. And so think longevity and it just, it's going to absolutely 100% benefit you in the long run. Now, what I want to talk about is kind of a, mm, 
I wouldn't say a hot topic, but it's a topic that I don't have firsthand experience with, but I understand the concept of. And what that is, is watercolor tattoos. And I think watercolor tattoos are beautiful. I mean, I love the artistic, um, everything that goes into it artistically. I love how it looks. I just don't, I don't have any. Now, this is a newer trend. And like I said, it's a little bit of a hot topic because a lot of um, artists who do watercolor tattoos are very adamant about they're going to last. And I'm not going to argue with them because again, I'm not a tattoo artist, but I did do my research and I wanted to share that with you. So you have as much knowledge as possible going into your next tattoo appointment. Now, what makes a watercolor tattoo a watercolor tattoo is the simple fact that they have no black outline. And I didn't even realize that when I was starting to research this subject. And I'm like, wow, that's right. This is really cool. There's, there's no black outline there. And that's what makes it and gives it that look. So you have no black outline. You just have these amazing colors. And then also to side note to that, I read that people say that these watercolor tattoos hurt less because it, there's no black outline. And th I don't know about you, but I get this question all the time, which hurts worse, the, the outline or the shading? And to me, it's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Doesn't really matter. I mean, there's two different, it, you're either eating a chicken sandwich or you're either eating an egg salad sandwich. The, there's no answer to either one. They both hurt, but typically, I personally, from my experience, I think the outline hurts worse than the shading. It's a single needle and it's just, it, to me, it just hurts worse. But um, a watercolor tattoo is supposedly supposed to be, um, yeah, it's funny when people say tattoos don't hurt. No, every single tattoo hurts. And in fact, I was, um, when I was getting tattooed by Austin Maples, one of the other tattoo artists there mentioned the same thing, Zach. And they're like, um, they're like, why do people say the tattoos don't hurt? They're like, hands down, these suckers hurt. And I'm like, hands down, you are absolutely correct. Now some hurt more than others, but every single tattoo does hurt. Okay. So now you know what a watercolor is. Um, when they address white hits way more at the end, haha. <laughs> See, now that's a thing, Lauren. And here's another little tip. It's like, um, the, the, the white ink doesn't hurt any more than any other color, but it hurts more because it's the last color they apply. All right. You already sensory overload. You're already like, oh my gosh, I cannot handle any more of this. And they're like, Hey, I'm just going to go in with a white, um, with a white, um, highlight. And you're like, ah, that is why white always hurts because white is always the last color they apply. Zach says my form was dripping blood when he was done, but it looked great. Yeah. You know what? My hand, Zach, this hand right here bled way more than this hand. Um, but there was way more color put into this one. So yeah, and you know what? And that's just all part of the journey. It's like you, you walk out and you're, um, a, a hot bloody mess, but gosh, it looks great when it's done. All right. So watercolors, we know what they are. We know they're a new trend. They're supposed to hurt less, but they don't have that black outline. And that's where it is kind of like, when they say they don't last as long and it's because, um, it's because I don't, well, let me, let me, I jumped ahead on that one. Okay. So in the watercolor, when they're actually applying the, thank you for my rose, when they're applying the color, they have a tendency to have a softer watercolor look. All right. That's what watercolor is. You compare a watercolor painting to an oil painting uh, and it's a much softer application. And that is how your ink is applied on your tattoo. Soft, very soft colors. I don't know how many times I can say soft, but it is a softer color. And again, we go back to the, the idea of 
less ink, it's going to fade faster. It's just, it's science, I guess. But if you have like a really heavily packed tattoo full of color and it fades a little bit, it's still gonna have a lot of color because that color is packed in there. So you have to just kind of keep that ideology when you're going in and getting your watercolor tattoo. Now talk to your artist. If you want a watercolor tattoo, I say get them. Again, they're beautiful. But talk to your artist about like, hey, you know what? In five years, if these colors are not as vibrant as they are, are you prepared to, to put more color in? And if you are, think great. Problem solved. Again, there is no reason and nothing that is stopping us from actually going in and touching up our tattoos. So I also read online because you know, um, how, did, ooh, how long did the flower tattoo take? That one was probably mm, three hours. It was, um, yeah, no, it was three hours of just out. But you have to realize that, you know, I had my flower and then I also had my wrist done at the same time. So all in all, it probably took probably about three hours. And it was a, um, it was a mess. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to go get your hands tattooed, take off all your jewelry before you go in. I was totally just out of the, um, it's beautiful. Thank you. It is one of my, it is one of my absolute favorites. I absolutely, my hands are by far one of my, my favorite placements. Um, but just off chance, I took off my ring because I have this ring right here and I have a thumb ring. And just by chance, I took them off just like, oh, you just never know. Thank you again for my roses, Zach. And so I took them off and I, my hand swelled up. By the time I got to my car, it looked like um, I had been bit by a rattlesnake. It was just like, poof, and it stayed that way for about 10 days. So take your jewelry off if you get a hand tattoo. So now, all right, so what I read online, on the line, on the internet, because if you read it, you know it's got to be true, is that... Um, the simple fact that watercolor tattoos don't have that black outline, they have a tendency to blur out a little bit faster than regular tattoos. Now, I'm going to give you all just a moment to let that sink in, all right? I never put two and two together until I read that. And I'm like, that is the most interesting concept I think that I have figured out about tattoos that I've learned in a very long time. And again, it was like, doing, and I researched it a little bit more. And what it is, and I'm going to tell you exactly why that's a thing, it's because it says that the black ink that they use to outline a tattoo has a carbon base. This creates a barrier around the color parts, keeping it from blurring. Did you know that? Okay, so, ooh, Zach says, let's get Lani to the top 100 today. She's providing actual value and deserves it. Um, tap that screen. Thank you, Zach. Okay, I don't know what you're doing at nine o'clock every morning from here on out, Zachary, but you are now um, my best cheerleader and I, will, I expect you here every morning. But it's a thing. And there is just so much science in tattooing that sometimes we forget the knowledge that our tattoo artists have, all right? Not only are they great artists, but they, are, they have skills that we as just normal people, we don't have because we don't need them in our daily lives. But we need to find out these professionals that have these skills that can tell you things like this, all right? And it is, again, we go into, sometimes we go into tattoo shops and we're so like intimidated and we, um, Linda says that totally makes sense about the, um, the carbon. Yeah, and you know what? And I mean, I've been getting tattooed for 28 years and I love the science of tattooing. And by that, I mean like the culture that goes behind it, the knowledge that they have. Um, thank you, Courtney. And just D all of the above. 
And to me, it's like when I read that, I'm like, wow, there's still so much to know about tattooing that I haven't even scratched the surface. But this, again, is why you 100% need to find that artist who has this knowledge. Now, if you want your, bro your cousin's brother's girlfriend's uncle to tattoo you in your garage and you end up not having the tattoo that you want or you end up having a tattoo that doesn't last more than six weeks, then you know what? It's not them. It's not the tattoo. It's not the placement. It was your choice. You chose to do that. So I say... Um, I've always wanted till summer, me personally. Okay, is it okay to get a tattoo in the summer? However, I do go swimming in the ocean and pool. Is that okay? Okay, I'm gonna tell you that right now. Hold on, do not go anywhere. So if you, um, if somebody's like, hey, you know what? My cousin's brother's uncle's girlfriend's brother's dad is gonna tattoo you in your garage, think twice about it, all right? Just be like, you know what? He seems like a great guy but I'm gonna hold off and I'm gonna save up my money and I'm gonna get a tattoo that's gonna last. I'm gonna get a tattoo that where people know about outlines and stuff like that. So that is my motherly advice for you for today. If you take nothing else out of this conversation, just your body and your tattoos, you need to value them for longevity and by getting that artist who knows their craft is the best best way to do that. Now, getting a tattoo in the summer, you absolutely 100% can, but you absolutely 100% need to stay out of the sun, the ocean, a lake, a jacuzzi, and D, all of that. And I mean, you need to stay out of the sun, the jacuzzi, the ocean, and the lake for a, a while. I personally in talking to the artists and doing my research and I get pushback on this all the time because people tell me like oh you know what that's way too long but I say I wouldn't go into I wouldn't go into it um for like three months at the very least and then um and then I would go into it and I know that that's overkill but again I'm looking at longevity all right I'm looking at the simple fact that had I have not taken care of my tattoos when I was in my 30s and my 40s, now that I'm going into my 60s, it's like, you know what? I'm glad I did because I think my tattoos look beautiful. So you have to look at that three months as your investment to your tattoo for a lifetime. And yeah, it might be like, oh, well, that's a bummer, but it would be a bummer now. But I'm going to tell you what's even more of a bummer is if you don't let your tattoo heal, you go in the sun, you go into a jacuzzi, you get an infection, and then you just have this blob of a scar, and that is what you want to avoid. So even if I get one in the winter or fall, I'd have to hide it from direct sun. Um, yeah, because I mean, the whole thing is, is like a lot of times the whole myth, the whole mythology, the whole myth about sun is that the sun is only bad for us in, hello, Connie, we think that sun's only bad for us in the summer, but sun is the sun 365 days a year. All right. Now, when I say like hide, if you could, let's just say you're in the winter and you're going to get a, a tattoo on your arm, chances are you're going to have a sweater on, chances are you're going to be wearing a top or a jacket and you're fine. Once your tattoo heals, get into a regimen of putting on sunscreen every single day and then that. Now, if you're going to get a, um, a tattoo in November and then go to Hawaii for two weeks, that might not work, you know, because you are going to have that, that a direct sunshine on your tattoo. Yep, wearing a sweater every time I go outside. Yeah, and you know what? And here's the thing, it's, it's like I work from home. I'm in my house all day long. But when I take Indy for a walk, regardless as to what season it is, I put sunscreen on. And I do that every single day. I have my windows tinted in my car and I have a UV protector on my windshield because otherwise it's like driving around in a magnifying glass. And it is also always, always my intention, like I keep on saying, 
that I am invested into my tattoos looking good for years. Now, if you don't care, if you're like, oh, I don't care, I don't really care if my tattoo looks good or not. I mean, I don't, I don't really care about it when I'm 60. Then do whatever you want. I mean, I'm not. There's no law. There is no tattoo police walking around the beach giving people tickets for not doing good aftercare on their tattoos. But if you are, if you have a tattoo that's going to be visibly seen for the next 40, 50 years, then yeah, it just makes sense. I mean, we put, and here's what kills me, is that we put all this time and this energy and this money into getting a new tattoo, okay? We, we think about the concept. We research the, the design. We pick the artist. We pay good money. And then as soon as that thing is healed, we're like, that, that was it. You know what? Fate's going to just take it away. And that, I don't understand why we do that. I mean, there's so much goes into the, the life of your tattoo that lasts so much longer once we walk out of that shop. So think about your tattoos again as a part of you that needs to be nurtured just like every other single part of you. And it is a beautiful self-expression that you're going to want to still be expressing when you are in your 60s and 70s. Um, let's see. Awesome. Thank you, Lonnie. It says, no way. I want my tattoos to last a long time. Absolutely. But you know what? But that's not everybody's mentality and that's not everybody's mindset. And for that person who has that mindset of like, yeah, you know what? I don't care. You know what? Then good for you. I, I don't ever judge anybody for anybody's decision to do whatever they want. But I am here to tell you my tips and my ideas on how to heal and to also be very important on and on that. Um, do you have words of wisdom that are getting older in their 30s? Well, for one thing, I think people in their 30s are still really young. Um, and uh, gosh, you know what? And it's all about, yeah, I, I mean, I have a little rant that's been waiting to come out and here you go. When you're in your 30s and you're already worrying about getting older, you're already succumbing to the, to the message that society shoves down our throat, all right? We're, we're told in our, third, in our 30s that we're getting older. We're told in our 40s we're getting older. We're told when we're in our 50s we're too old to even care, you know? And that is just a bunch of, I wish I could, I wish I could use more colorful language because I really... Um, I, 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 I have a, my normal speech is that of a truck driver, but um, it's baloney, all right? And I want you 100% to stop playing into that. Because what happens is, is that we get so scared of aging, we rob ourselves of happiness. For example, I'm going to give you a little example right now. And I bought this yesterday, and I think this is a really cool product. I used it for, it's a bunch of bull, yes, Lauren. And I used it this morning, and it's a really good product. And I'm excited to see how tan I can make myself without going into the sun. Now, a perk of having a lot of tattoos is that, you know what, I don't have a whole lot of skin I have to actually um, use it on. But what caught my eye is that it was giving a warning that there was no sunscreen uh, yeah, there's no sunscreen in this product. And I want to read you this sentence, and then I'm going to come back to this, um, um, to come back to you on this one. It says, repeated exposure to unprotected skin while tanning may increase, may increase the risk of skin aging, skin cancer, and other harmful effects. Now, what caught my eye to this right now, and I really want you to, to hear what caught my eye, is the simple fact is that they put aging before cancer, all right? Now, why are we more scared of getting old than we are of getting cancer? And if that doesn't tell you what is wrong with our society at this moment, that is just one of the things that is wrong, but what a huge slap in the face that was this morning when I was getting ready. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Um, I think I would rather avoid cancer than avoid getting old. 
So that is the philosophy and that is the mindset that we need to stop doing, okay? We need to stop being scared of being in our 50s and our 60s. I mean, what are we scared of? Are we scared of death? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody is avoiding that. That's going to happen. It is inevitable. So let that one go. Are we scared that we're not going to be beautiful and sexy? Let that one go. You know what? I tell you right now, I would stop, drop, and roll for Brad Pitt. And um, he is older than I am. And I mean, look at Ryan Reynolds. I mean, there is so many sexy men. But you, I, I, I challenge you to find a woman of the same age that is an absolute heartthrob like the men because women are, are, are judged so much more harshly. And we're only told we're beautiful when we're young. And I'm here to tell you that is even more baloney than being scared of getting older. So let it go. And it is just insane to me how, how we are scared of getting older. So do you want my advice for being 30 and being worried about being older? Let it go. Because you know what? Your life can be just as beautiful, just as vibrant, just as amazing, just as bright, bold, and beautiful in your 50s and 60s as it can be in your 20s, in your 30s. But I'm going to tell you right now, the only difference is, is that you're going to have more confidence and you're not going to care what anybody thinks. Because by the time you get to be my age, you're like, you know what? I have just fought to get here and you're not going to take away my self-esteem. And it's that message that, you know what? The media doesn't promote that thinking, but we sure can. And we might as well do it on a daily basis. Um, Miss J5 says, I wish my tattoo artist would have made suggestions as to the color I choose. You know what? If do you already have your tattoo or are you planning on getting it? Because if you already have it and you don't like it, find a tattoo artist that does cover ups and see if you can't make any adjustments to it. So then that way you 100% love your tattoo because we should never, ever, ever not be, um, uh, I got it last week. Okay, what you need to do is just let it heal. Give it a couple of months, um, at least three months. Once it's completely healed, if you're not satisfied with it, find a, an artist who does color up, cover ups and see if you can't just modify those colors a little bit to something you really like. Um, don't buy the hype, girls. Listen to Lonnie. Be yourself. Nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Absolutely. And it's up to us whether or not we choose to listen or not. You know what? We, we absolutely, 100% at the end of the day, we can be like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to buy into this and I'm going to do life my own way. Or we can be like, well, yeah, I guess, you know, I guess I might as well just be like that sheep and, and, or that cow led to slaughter. You know, if they tell me that it must be true. And we just need to let that go because it is not true. Um, Connie says, I say embrace whatever age you are, be who you are with 30, 40, 60, 80, and enjoy every year of your life. Absolutely. Um, Linda says, I am proud that I am in my 60s and still express myself however I wear what I want. Good. I am so happy about that. Lonnie, is it okay to have one specific tattoo artist or is it okay to, um, to go to more? Um, you know what? Go who you, Okay. I am very loyal to my tattoo artist. Brian Dell has done the majority of my tattoos, but he has a specific style, all right? Brian, um, he specializes in realism tattoos. That is his, his, his forte. And um, I wanted an American traditional calf sleeve. It's not his forte. I found Austin Maples, who specializes in American traditional tattoos, and so I he is my American traditional artist. Brian Dell is my realism artist. And if I want a watercolor tattoo, I will find a watercolor um, tattoo artist who specializes in watercolors. So it is perfectly okay to have more than one artist. Now, out of respect for Brian, because he did tattoo me for so long before I got a different style, 
I told him what I was doing. I'm like, hey, dude, I feel like I'm cheating on you. I'm going to go um, up to L.A. and get tattooed by Austin because I want this, spe this specific style and I want him to do it. And he's like, oh, awesome. And they actually ended up following each other on social media and they're, they're like social media buddies now. So absolutely, don't feel locked into one artist. I mean, you can have different artists do different styles. Um, how find reputable tattoo artists? Is there a network? I think the best way to find a reputable tattoo artist is to ask so, so, social media. You know what? I say um, if, you, if you're looking for a specific style, put a post out. Be like, hey, you know what? I want a, um, a realism tattoo of a butterfly. Does anybody have any suggestion? And people with tattoos, especially good tattoos, love to talk about their tattoos. And people who have had really bad experiences like to warn you. They'll be like, oh my gosh, I went to this person and I thought I was getting this and I actually got that. Stay away from that person. So I say utilize social media and um, ask for referrals. 100 probably 100 probably the best way to find new artists. Um, yep, I have an American traditional artist and one non-neo-traditional um, artist. Yeah. Uh, Courtney, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, are you using a posture fixture? Yes, I have been using this for, gosh, what is it now? Like um, two weeks, I think it is, because I had horrible posture. I mean, I was looking at myself in videos and I was just like that hunkered over, I don't know, I was that little hunkered over little old lady. And I have scoliosis, so my shoulders are not, um, they're not even. And so one side of my top would constantly be falling down and I'd be constantly pushing it back. But I found this on Amazon and it makes me put my shoulders back. It makes me straighten up. And um, it actually, my back pain, because I have, like I said, I have scoliosis right between my shoulder blades. And by my bad posture and that, not only was I having back pain between my shoulder blades, but it was affecting my lower back. And I am not a doctor, and I'm not going to say that it's a cure-all for everybody, but my back pain is definitely minimized. And um, I absolutely, I've, I've been loving it. And I wear it, um, I wear it during the live show because I sat on a really hard bench for an hour. And I was finding that I was in a lot of pain at the end of the, um, the show. And then also too, like if I'm editing or if I'm driving, if I drive for a long period of time, I do this and I get all hunkered over in my car. I'm all like, I'm driving my car. I don't know why I slouch in my car, but if I wear this when I'm driving long distances, it actually, my back pain feels so much better. And I wear it out to the grocery store. I don't care. You know, um, well, never heard of him getting one now. I got mine on Amazon. Um, I believe it's in my shop, but if not, just I'll show you. It just has like two little Velcros and this is called Comfy Brace. That's the brand. And I just put it on and I'm going to give you a little tip because this is what really happened to me. When I first started wearing it, I, I don't know if it's because my posture was so bad or if my underarms were so tender, but it was just digging into my arms right here. And what I have done is over the past two weeks, I actually find myself um, setting up straighter. So I'm not putting as much pressure on it. And so I just, um, it doesn't hurt underneath my little underarms anymore because there's a video out there somewhere where you can actually see the toilet paper that I put underneath my brace because I needed to put some sort of padding on there. And I'm like, oh, wow, honey, that's a really cool look that you got going on there. You know, nothing like trying to explain toilet paper in your pits. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, I was like, I was not going to give up on my mission to um, straighten up my posture. And if I had to, if I had to do that, I had to do that. So, okay. So in wrapping of Tattoo Tuesday, when good tattoos go bad, 100% know that it is going to be your artist and your placement. And what was the third one? It was your artist, your placement, 
and the application. So get a good artist, put it in a spot that is going to hold it. And even if you do pick a spot like the side of your hand, you know, just know that you're going to have to go back in and, and touch it up. And again, touch ups are perfectly fine. And also too, do not buy into the hype of you are not going to enjoy your life when you're over 50. Because you are and you're constantly going to be learning new things and you're constantly going to be flourishing. In fact, I forgot to tell you, but remember, oh, last Thursday, I told you I don't wear sandals because I got bullied as a kid over my toes. Well, I want to show you, hold on, look who's wearing Birkenstocks. That's right, I'm wearing sandals today. I dusted off my Birkenstocks. I have this free people, um, I have on my hot shot pants and my little flowy, um, my little flowy top. And I'm like, you know what? You know what would go good with that vibe, Lonnie? A pair of Birkenstocks. And I'm like, oh, you know who has a pair of Birkenstocks? I do. Do you know who hasn't worn them in probably three years? Me. And I pulled them out because I, I keep everything. I pulled them out, dusted them off, put them on my feet. My toes were like, yay. And I went outside. They're like, that's the sun. But I'm like, yes, toes, I'm introducing you to the sun. So I, I did what I said I was going to do. I told you all I was going to not let the, the trauma of my past, of past bullying, of negative self-talk, I wasn't going to let it stop me. I didn't let it stop me. And I'm wearing my Birkenstocks. That's awesome, Lonnie. Thank you. You know what? And again, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can get past those mean inner thoughts, you can get past those mean inner thoughts. And again, remember, my thoughts become my reality. Everything is possible to me. My thoughts, my thoughts of my, me not being able to wear sandals were my thoughts. And you know what? My reality was is that I couldn't wear sandals because those were my thoughts. But when I changed it up, when I was like, no, my reality is, is that I can wear sandals just as much as anybody else, that has become my reality. And my toes are so, um, my toes are so happy about it. They're all like, you can't see my toes, but as I've been talking, they've been like, rip, 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 rip. they're all like, look, we're free, we're free, we're free. Connie says, good for you, Lonnie. I have foot issues. I still wear sandals. I'm actually going to wear a bright new bathing suit that shows my belly. <gasps> that is so cool. Now, if y'all don't know who Connie is, she is on YouTube, but she has recently joined TikTok. And I have to tell you, you are such a bright light of on my For You page because you are just, you are, you're shining bright and you are just really, really like, you're like, hey, here I am. This is me. I'm sharing me with you. And it's been really inspirational. Let's change the way we think about ourselves. Absolutely. And, and it's important. Now, TikTok is on here also. And I'm speaking to TikTok. It's the simple fact that you cannot buy into the whole concept of age. All right. See, here's the thing. It's, it's like the amazing thing about youth is that they're rebellious and they're like, I'm going to change the world. And I applaud you for that. And it is yours to change. And what you need to start doing is, is you need to start changing how you think about age now, because it is your future. And I want your future to be brighter than mine. I want your future to be kinder than mine. And I want you to just be like, you know what? That used to be the narrative like when Lonnie was older, but that's not going to be my narrative when I'm older. So you're, ch or you're already changing the world. You might as well change that too. So that's your assignment, TikTok. You need to change the way that you're thinking about age. So there you go. No, no, you know, not like you don't have enough other things that, that y'all have to change. You, can you put that on your list too? Um, Connie says, thank you, Lonnie. Uh, I hope I make people smile. Well, you make me smile each and every time. And you know, like I said, whenever I'm on my For You page, I'm like, ah, 
<laughs> there is Connie. She's going to be doing something fun. So, okay, so that was Tattoo Tuesday. That was fun. You know what? That was a lot of fun. I really liked that one. Now, tomorrow is Wednesday, and I put a poll up on my channel again about my live show um, about keeping a set schedule or just doing more of like random subjects. And you know what, YouTube? Yeah, split right down the middle. You were just like 50-50. So I am, again, I'm going to have a, a talk with Robert this afternoon because he is my, my go-to smarty. And um, I'm going to, th I think I'm going to keep it kind of like the same, but not the same, if that makes any sense. And then also, too, um, tomorrow is the Beauty Wednesday. So I went, I went to CVS. I got my old school beauty products. I got Pons, I got cold cream moisturizer, and I got some Noxzema. And I'm going to talk about that. And I'm going to show you how I use it. And I am going to give you my review because I'm going to, little spoiler alert, is that we don't always have to reinvent the wheel, all right? Again, we are so determined to not age that we would buy anything. You know what? They could be like, rub a piece of bacon on your face. And I'd be like, la, 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 bacon, it's good for your face. We got to stop doing that. We just need to have a little bit more of a realistic approach to our skincare and our, our thoughts on... Um, and your thoughts on aging, and that's what we're talking about tomorrow. <gasps> thank you. Let's see here. Oh, thank you. That is three nin three ni three ninja. Is it three ninja or three Nina J? But thank you very much. But that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. We're gonna talk about some old school beauty products because you know what? I'm old school. And because you know what? Because I I think I'm considered old. But I don't really care because I don't really think about my age very much. I just think about me for today. You know what? Uh, Say Nina, please. Oh, okay. Thank you. Say Nina. Nina, thank you. I appreciate you very much. I really do. So we are going to sign off for today. I'm super excited. I'm going to take my toes for a walk. I think I need to put sunscreen on them though, because it's been a long time since I've actually seen the sun. And I don't want to come um, here tomorrow and be like, hey, guess what? My little, my little tootsies are sunburned. So we're going to take Indy for her walk. And I appreciate each and every single one of you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you come back tomorrow. Remember 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and we will be talking then. All right, Courtney, I'm going to uh, message you. I love you dearly and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye.